Biotechnology in Focus, coming soon on NTA. Our programs are getting better and fresher. And it's because we are thinking about you. inside water you never can tell you cannot find your way out you can't find the actual route and the tendency of you capsizing is, is, is high early morning flood kills three in abuja the intimidation of the population by words by speech is an act of terrorism and this government intends to take this matter seriously make head speech and face sanctions a warning from the acting president, Yemi Oshibado. And more solidarity visit to President Muhammad Buhari. Good evening and welcome. Thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. I am Muhammad Kudu Abubakar. Jennifer is in our Lagos studio, while Naomi is in my degree. The federal government has drawn the line on hate speeches, stressing that Henceforth, hate speech will be met with serious sanctions, declaring open a retreat on security by the National Economic Council. Acting President Yemi Oshibaju described hate speeches as a species of terrorism, which will no longer be tolerated. State House correspondent Jide Onifari has the report. Silence is said to be golden. But acting President Yemi Oshimbaju says in this situation the nation is in, the silence of leaders at this time to hate speech would be a grave disservice to the country, its peace and its future. The intimidation of a population by words, by speech, is an act of terrorism. And this government intends to take this matter seriously. As I've said, we've drawn a line against hate speech. It will not be tolerated. It will be taken as an act of terrorism, and all of the consequences will follow it. Emphasizing the fact that the challenge is for all, the acting president says the inspector general of police has been directed to intensify the community policing program. And this is why I urge all of our political leaders, religious leaders, business leaders, and all of those who truly want a united country and a country where there will be peace and security to ensure that we do not tolerate by our silence the hate speech that we see and hear, that we hear every day in our community. Our constitution states that the primary purpose of government shall be the security and welfare of the people. And as President Buhari likes to say, and I quote, you cannot administer a country you have not secured. Now is the time to act in fighting poverty, he says. But we are determined to do things the right way, to be transparent in our dealings with you, to respect your views regardless of partisan or ideological affiliations, and to join hands with you to create positive change in the lives of all our people. Where we are to take the stock and then to look at which area, especially in the issue of what you know, uh, issue of uh, uh, problem of the northeast, which is fully aware of about all of you, and militancy in the Niger Delta, kidnapping, and what have you. And then to, enter, to engage also the security agencies to know where we are, what are the problems, and how do we move forward. I think this is the total discussion that took place today in our security. I gave uh, a blueprint. And what I did was to employ the local method. The local method was giving the security to the people. Acting President Toshibajo said government would not relent in the vision to ensure a secure nation where all citizens can aspire and achieve their dreams and ambitions. From the conference center of the State House, GJ Unifade, NT News. The conversation on national unity and stability on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria program rounded off this Thursday with discussions again stressing that remaining as a single entity 
is Nigeria's best option. Gufan Chaji, who monitored the program, reports that discussions argue that review of the constitutional structure through federalism and good governance are likely to address Nigeria's most challenges. As a seasoned legislator and experienced diplomat, a businessman, a constitutional scholar, and a female publisher constituting the panel, the last edition in the series on national unity and stability told the path of the previous three. Guests identified challenges and proffer that a functional system will address all the divisive tendencies in the country. Bottom line for national unity and stability is good governance. Uh, it's not the number of laws you have, but how you implement uh, and execute those laws. And when it comes to participation in governance and leadership, uh, let it be that uh, leaders continue to exhibit those tendencies that bring people together. The entry point to national integration for me is for us to really go back and deal with how we constitutionalize our existence in a more democratic way so that no part will feel cheated. Politics is defined by ethnicity. Politics is defined by religion. And there is this big wall of exclusion. If you don't belong to the mainstream, whether you are talking in religious or ethnic terms, no matter how good you are, you will not be given an opportunity. And then what suffers? It is that country that we call Nigeria. The analysts say that Nigeria and Nigerians are better together as no path can be greater than the present setup. If we want to get back, we must first of all pull the economy yeah. back. And if the economy is back on stream, people will be Okay. You know, engaged, yeah. and you find not much time again to dissipate energy, fighting, struggling for ethnicity, religion, and all of that. The man who is in Mushi, and the man who is in Woji, and the man who is somewhere in, in Jos, and all of those people are really interested in being able to eat. They're interested in being able to have electricity. They're interested in being able to have good roads. So they're interested in just having their country function. While emphasizing dialogue, consensus, and commitment, the guests urge leaders in all spheres of life to be in the vanguard for change in attitude and approach to national interest. In Abuja, Gufan Shaji, NTN News. Joining me to provide perspective on Nigerian unity is the U.S. Embassy's charge d'affaires, Mr. David Young. Welcome to NT Network News Studio. Good evening. You are reported to have spoken so well on the need for national unity in Nigeria, and even your ambassador is also reported to have made it the focus of his Independence Day remarks. Why is it so important to the U.S.? We feel that it's very important that as discussions go forward about tough questions about restructuring or resources or how those decisions are made, that it be in the context of national unity. Uh, discussions in a democracy about resources, for example, are one of the main things that citizens debate in a democracy. But we very much are strongly committed to Nigeria's unity and the need for these discussions to happen peacefully, without hate speech, without violence, and without threats of violence. What lessons will you see from American uh, perspective Nigerians can learn from? You know, I think from our own experience, we've learned that having democratic debate about those kind of tough questions within the context of our national unity is critical. You know, frankly, in the United States today, we're going through a tough time right now. We have some very, very tough and uh, difficult discussions that are going on in our country. But it's important that we do it, just like Nigerians do it, in the context of democratic debate that's peaceful without hate speech. What will you say is your message to Nigerian youths, whom everybody say are the future leaders? Sure. I think it's critically important that youth step up and realize that they have rights as citizens, that they're the leaders of tomorrow, that they can be involved in this democracy, this vibrant democracy, and campaign for the things they care most about. 
uh, but do so peacefully and campaigning for justice and, and rights and improvement of the quality of life for all citizens. Mr. David Young, Church of the U.S. Embassy, thank you for joining us on NTN Network News Studio. Thank you very much. President Muhammadu Buhari has expressed satisfaction with the steady progress in the global oil market with the countries at the driver's seat. This was when the OPEC Secretary General, Dr. Muhammad Senusi Barakindu, visited him at the Abuja House in London. The president said he has been following events within the OPEC and the oil market with keen interest and commended the OPEC Secretary General for ensuring that effective implementation of the declaration of cooperation between OPEC producers and non-producers. Since the assumption of Nigeria's Dr. Mohamed Senusi Barkindo as the OPEC Secretary General in 2016, the international price of crude has appreciated considerably, thereby boosting the revenues of oil producing countries, including Nigeria. Being uh, an OPEC minister, uh, in his days as Minister of Petroleum of Nigeria, and he's, he remains very conversant uh, with the activities uh, of this organization. And I, I must add that his coming back to office has elevated the profile of Nigeria in OPEC and in the international community. Nigeria's Senate President Bukola Saraki and the Speaker House of Representatives Yakubu Dogara were also in London to see President Muhammad Buhari. The federal government and the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, have agreed to meet next week to enable ASU get feedback on the offers by the government. The reconciliatory meeting, which had in attendance representatives of the government and ASU, was also held behind closed doors, and therefore details were not given on were not made public. However, there are indications that when ASU returns with feedback next week, progress is likely to be made on the way forward. The various areas of uh, disputes, and uh, luckily, within the last 48 hours, government have been working. Uh, the Minister of Education, Minister of Finance, Attorney General of the Federation, and we are taking some government position which we had uh, communicated to us. Uh, we've taken <coughs> copious note of their offers, uh, but we have to get back to our members and make all the information available for them to consider and advise us. So based on their advice, based on their position, we'll come back to government hopefully within the next one week. Will the strike be called before then? The leadership of the union did not call the strike. Our members called the strike. So they will decide when to suspend the strike. Correspondent Emmanuel Aimero reports that both parties agreed to be open on best ways to address the lingering problems affecting the implementation of the 2009 federal government and ASU agreement. Water supply and sanitation challenge is huge in Nigeria, but not unsurmountable with collaboration of governments at all levels and development partners. This is the common ground at the regular meeting of the National Council on Water Resources holding in Akure under the theme Revitalizing Urban Water Supply and Sanitation in Nigeria. Correspondent Musbao Dano Harp reports. If water is life, this is the assemblage of relevant stakeholders who seek life for the Nigerian people. And to secure the life, the meeting of the highest decision-taking body in the water sector and their technical and development partners have great tasks to find solution to the negative statistics on Nigeria's water sector. The minister particularly decried the decline in access to portable water from 31% in 1990 to about 7% in 2015. A situation whereby not a single community in today's Nigeria can boast of 100% fiber water supply is totally unacceptable in the 21st century. We intend to share available data with all the states, and it is my hope that your hopeful standing on access to water and sanitation shall serve as a wake up call. These dams cannot just stay there and waste away. It does not make sense. So, 
borrow on behalf of states and deduct it as source because the people need water. It is a priority. It should be a priority. Development partners articulated efforts so far and promised continuous assistance for Nigeria to attain the 2030 Water for All and Sanitation Target of the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs. In Akure, Muspao, and Wahab, NT News. A man and his two children lost their lives at the early hours of Thursday after a flood resulting from a downpour that lasted hours in Abuja. Basi Itaikman visited the scene and our reports. It was a sympathetic situation here in Lugungoman district in Abuja Municipal Council. The flood took away the life of three, a man and two children. I have some eyewitnesses. You go check on that place, you say, oh God, that place deep. Go back. Go back. Oh guy no agree. You tap the glass, you own the glass, you close the motto. You go reverse small, you go enter that place. You water you carry the motto. I took the man and the daughter to hospital. Get into the hospital, he's dead. The doctor confirmed he's dead. He said, we are using this medium to at least plead with government that if they can come and come to our aid and just do something here. Are there lessons to learn from this incident as we expect more rains? When someone notice rain, wherever he is, he should wait until the rain fell and... President of the area told NTA News that the disease left behind a nursing wife and two children. Basi Taipan, NTA News. Meanwhile, a team from the Office of the Ecological Fund is in Nasarawa State to undertake comprehensive assessment of degraded areas across the 13 local government areas of the state. Abu Bakar Oswam Akwanga, who reports that the agitation by communities in the state to be included amongst Ecological Fund duration states of the Federation may soon come to fruition. The Nasrallah state is one of the endemic states with high profile of ecological challenges owing to the surrounding river basins and its fringes, including mining activities which give rise to uncontrollable flood, displacing persons and causing wanton destruction on farmlands, including property worth different values annually. This, however, prompted the concern of stakeholders to request the attention of the federal government on areas of urgent environmental needs. The areas of challenges covered erosion, desertification, pollution, and even oil spillage. Nasra state government says it will not resist any intervention, particularly from the federal government, in order to effect immediate remedial measures as part of its reclamation policy on the environment. We are calling on the federal government to rescue Nasra State from these ecological problems. Residential technical team deployed to Nasra State to take inventory of ecological site is coming at a time the state government is channeling huge resources in addressing ecological problems in some of the worst eat areas. In Lafia, I am Habubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed says provision of infrastructure to ease the difficulties faced by citizens is a priority of President Muhammad Buhari's administration. The minister stated this when he officially opened the AYA Abuja City Lincoln Bridge. Anthony Forson reports. The bridge links traffic from the Kefi access into Abuja through the expressway. It provides access from Shehu Shagari Way to link the Federal Secretariat. It also transverses Ahmad Bella Way through Area 11 and Area 10 up to Apo and Asokoro. It will, in addition, provide a link to Central Bank and Women Development Center. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed, who formally opened the road for use by motorists, said the timely completion of the project is a demonstration of this administration's commitment to develop infrastructure in the country. It is um, uh, a measure of uh, the kind of um, passion, tenacity of purpose. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this is happening at a time of dwindling revenue. I think that text says, says a lot for this administration. The Information and Culture Minister also said as Nigeria gears up to host two major events, the International Press Institute World Conference and the United Nations World Tourism Organization Summit, beautifying the federal capital territory is a move in the right direction. Opening up the cities, encouraging business, and uh, making sure that um, 
people can get from point A to point B in the shortest uh, you know, uh, possible uh, time. The FCT minister said the project cost his administration over 2 billion naira, and the Capital Territory Administration is determined to do more. As you can see, there is an interchange that involves an enormous amount of rock blasting. By the time that rock is properly blasted, then we are going to have loops, interchange loops, uh, in this particular location, and then the other one across the road linking uh, Kano House to cross over to the NTA. And by, that, by the time that is done, I think this project will be completed. He, however, used the opportunity to call on the people to imbibe the culture of protecting national assets rather than vandalizing them. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyama, has appealed to APC members in Enugu State to remain focused. He stated these while receiving some members of the party from Enugu State in Abuja. The minister assured them of the party's support and advised them to shun any act capable of causing disunity in the state. He said consultation will make the party stronger and cohesive. It was very important to, to start to build uh, a consensus uh, within, within the Enugu State Party. You can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Ahead on the news tonight, National Council on Water Resources discuss strategies for revitalizing urban water supply and sanitation in Nigeria. Change does not just happen. You and I and all of us must appreciate that we all have our part to play if we want to bring change about. We must change our lawless habits, our attitude to public office and public trust. We must change our unruly behavior in schools, hospitals, marketplaces, motor parks, on the roads, in homes and offices. To bring about change, we must change ourselves by being low abiding citizens. Nigeria is a strong emerging world economy with a population of over 170 million people. With the diligent work of the Standards Organization of Nigeria in line with the federal government's economic diversification agenda, SON has put in place accredited laboratories to ensure that made in Nigeria products meet international standards and ready for export. SON regularly conducts products registration, certifications, factory inspections, monitoring, a metrology laboratory to get accurate measurements, while SONCAP checks the conformity of imported products and the SON Legal Act to prosecute offenders. Don't sell and don't buy substandard products. Before you buy, look well well. See something, say something. Or call these numbers. SON Improving Life Through Standards. What about Indom in please. Yo. Wow. This is not my indomie. Please, sir, it's not indom. Don't call it indom. Sir, the taste is the difference. The difference is in the taste. That's why my brothers, my mommy, my daddy, and I all enjoy admission. So very delicious indomie. <laughs> the difference is the taste. Taste is the difference. Yes. Difference is in the taste. Nothing tastes like my Indomie. <laughs> Indomie noodles. Tasty nutrition. Good for you. Discover the liquid freshness of center fresh chewing gum that you feel. Others too. Center Fresh. Try. Do you know that the Nigerian?
colleagues now operates in the best international practices of policy? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. The Honorable Minister of Information and Culture and the Director General of the National Broadcasting Commission hereby invites all stakeholders in the broadcasting industry in Nigeria to her third annual lecture, which also marks the 25th anniversary of the deregulation of the Nigeria broadcasting industry, scheduled as follows. Date, Thursday, 24th August, 2017. Venue, Congress Hall, Transcap Hilton Hotel, Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. prompt. Theme, on cosmopolitanism, Nigeria ethnic politics politics and the communication of hate. Guest speaker, prolific Nigerian-born international speaker with Carlton University, Ottawa, Canada. Professor Pius Adesomi, Chief Host, al Lai Mohammed, Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Special Guest of Honor, His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abubakar. NBC, your right to quality broadcasting. Director General, announcer. Get ready for the Diaspora Festival, Badagri, Lagos, as we welcome Diasporans. Our ancestors walked through the door of no return. Now we walk through the door of return. And also to celebrate the cultural heritage of Nigeria. Theme, Voyage to Heritage, featuring a lot of exciting activities like the historic Door of Return ceremony, carnival procession, boat regatta, dark era procession, fishing competition, heritage site visits, international music concerts, an international symposium, themed African diaspora beyond the Atlantic, and lots more. Date. 23rd to 25th of August 2017. For sponsorship and more information, please call. Come and join the voyage to heritage. See you there. Bayes University Abuja offers world class education, uninterrupted academic session, and promising degrees. Bayes University Abuja is affordable and delivers quality with experienced international staff, superb facilities, overseas external examiners, and a serene academic atmosphere. We offer quality and affordable education, and students are within easy reach of their parents here at Bayes University Abuja. So learn to live at Bayes University for a brighter future. For more information, visit our website at www.baseuniversity.edu.ng or call 081-3376-9657 or 081-3376-9658. Bayes University Abuja, learn to live. Thank you for remaining with MTA Network News. Towards adopting an electronic voting system in Nigeria, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NACENI, are collaborating to work out modalities for its actualization. Political correspondent Abdullah Garba Benunkudu has an update. In line with the global best practices, Nigeria is considering e-voting system in the electoral process to ease the process with the needed credibility. In an interagency collaboration, INEC and NASENI 20-member technical committee has been inaugurated to determine the requirements and evaluate both legal and technical implications for e-voting solution. Evaluate the e-voting solution offered by NASENI in the light of the needs of INEC. Three, assess the operational, technical, and social issues associated with an e-voting system in Nigeria in the light of the NACENI solution. To study what NACENI has developed 
and to see how it could be adapted by INEC in the conduct of uh, future elections. A comprehensive report is expected by INEC and Naseni from the committee to facilitate the adoption or otherwise of the electronic voting system. In Abuja, Abdullahi Gerba Brunankudu, NTA News. Still on science and technology, science and technology innovation have been adopted by the federal government as the centerpiece for realization of the National Economic Recovery and Growth Plan 2017 to 2020. This was affirmed by the Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Ogbonaya Onu, when he hosted a world press conference to acquaint science correspondents with the philosophy and strategies of the programs designed to effectively implement the policies. Science, and science correspondent Kieran Omayo reports. Newly adopted science and technology roadmap by the Federal Executive Council is in furtherance of the current administration's resolve to allow science and technology be the driver of the diversification process that would translate into job creation, poverty reduction, and significant improvement in the standard of living of Nigerians. Dr. Onu said that Nigeria must prepare quickly for the adverse effect of dwindling oil price. We are convinced that with the new roadmap that will bring Nigeria to make our nation to deepen the processes of effectively developing science, technology, and innovation as the engine of growth in a diversified economy. He reiterated his confidence that the successful implementation of the new roadmap will deepen the role of science, technology, and innovation in the nation's journey to build a modern economy that will create a country of stronger global acclaim in the community of prosperous democracies. Kirian Umayo, NTA News. Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development Aisha Jumai Al Hassan has advised women to key into the federal government's empowerment program and scale up the process in meeting conditions, delaying the disbursement of the National Women Empowerment Fund, NAWEF. Talatu Ezirike reports that she was speaking at a sensitization program for the effective implementation of the scheme. Nigerian women are enterprising and dogged, but are faced with challenges, top of which is poverty. The trend, the federal government is being addressed through the National Women Empowerment Fund, an offshoot of the Government Enterprise and Empowerment Program. 80,000 women are expected to benefit from 10,000 to 100,000 for the first pilot scheme covering eight states. So far, only 25,700 have met the conditions for the loan. This has necessitated an enlightenment. Minister of Women Affairs stressed the uniqueness of the program in improving the welfare of women. Conditions are made very, very easy. It is for us to do the right thing. And if you are not in a group, we are not going to give you the loan. Success on this program will accelerate closure on the wide funding gap for women. It will make it easy. It will ameliorate the financial pressure on women. For others, thumbs up for federal government's social investment program, why the UN Women plans to build on the gains by empowering one million women. The best way to leave no one behind, of course, is to involve women. The number of those who have registered is a far cry because a lot of women are still yet to take their rightful position. By all the corporations to a meeting to ensure that we get the list that is required. The National Women Empowerment Fund, many agree, will achieve the desired results in empowering the status of women economically. Talat Ezeriki, NTA News. Creating a law that will boost the economic and developmental potentials of the tourism industry in Nigeria was the focus at a public hearing convened by the Senate Committee on Culture and Tourism. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegunoye reports that the potentials of the culture and tourism sector was not lost on key players. Specifically, deliberations were on the repeal and reenactment of the Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation Act of 2004. The role of tourism and its significant contribution to the gross domestic product of some developed countries like Japan and developing countries like the Gambia informed the need to bring to the fore an industry that has been identified as a prospective cash cow for Nigeria. The need to develop our tourism sector does not only lie with our gross domestic product. 
with our different multicultural backgrounds, we will also be promoting unity among our people. Despite the increasing and unpredictable shocks from terrorist attacks and political instability, health pandemics and natural disasters, travel and tourism continue to grow. So when this administration talks about change, that change should be in every step. The proposed bill was widely supported by participants who observed that reforms are needed to promote the industry. Tourism is responsible for $7.6 trillion globally, of which Africa sees only about 5%. The director of news, Aliu Baba Barao, represented the director general of the Nigerian television authority, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed. Especially at this particular time, when the government is trying to revamp the economy, there's more, no uh, better time than now. And uh, that is why people who are highly elated, they support the bill. And of course, we need to rejuvenate all those areas of concern. The committee is expected to submit its report to the Senate. From the National Assembly, Dennis Adignoye, NTA News. Still on culture, the 10th edition of the African Arts and Crafts Expo, AFAC 2017, draws near. The National Council for Arts and Culture organizers of the Expo unveils more creative ways to showcase African products. Director General of the Council, Otumba Olusha Gunronshui, at the Expo dinner in Abuja says about 25 countries have indicated interest to attend. Oina Yakalu Oka reports. None talks as beautifully as the talking drum. is just a tip of the iceberg of what to expect at the African Arts and Crafts Expo. Director General National Council for Arts and Culture, Otumba Olushe Guroshe, said it is aimed at using culture as a tool to change the narrative of Nigeria. But we're going to bring out some rich cultural exposure in Nigeria to speak for us as a people. Representative of some of the participating countries said Nigeria has a lot to showcase and pledged to collaborate with the council in promoting the country's unique cultural identities. The Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, is one of the supporters of the Expo. It's to harness the resources we have. And culture is a beautiful resource. It's not a depleting resource. It continues generation after generation. That is why we need to propagate history. The Director General, Naka, disclosed that the next year's edition of AFAC will be expanded to include countries beyond Africa and will be held at the first quarter of the year. Oyinaya Kalu Oka. NTA News. Jennifer in our Lagos Network Center has more on NTA Network News. Over to you, Jennifer. Thank you, Kudu. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. The Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has fixed the judgment for the 29th of, Go of August in the, in the case of Chukudume Me Onwamadike, popularly known as Evans. The applicant, who is a suspected kidnapper, is challenging his alleged illegal detention. Chuku Dumebi Onwa Madike, also known as Evans, is seeking an order of court to compel the police to charge him to court or release him on bail. In addition, pay him the sum of 300 million naira as damages for his alleged unlawful detention. Counsel for the Inspector General of Police and the Nigerian Police Force, Henry Obiaza, told the court that Evans' case has to do with murder, armed robbery, and kidnapping, which are capital offenses. He argued that under Section 35, Subsection 7 of the 1999 Constitution, Evans' rights were not absolute, even though plans are on to charge him to court. He, however, urged the court to dismiss the suit for want of merit. Evans' counsel, Ogun Beje, urged the court to hold that the respondents had breached the law by detaining him since the 10th of June. He told the court that the proper thing to do is for the respondents to charge the applicant to court. After listening to the counsel's argument, Justice Ablazis Anka fixed the 29th of August for judgment. In Lagos, Viera Chumuba, NTA News. The federal government has officially handed over the presidential lounge in Marina to the Lagos state government. Nosso Sula reports that the, pre the, pre the president's gesture is in response to the Lagos state government's bid to transform Marina Oniko access into a world-class arts and tourism hub. The permanent secretary state house, Marina Jalal Arabi, who led a strong federal government delegation 
urged Lagos State Government to judiciously use the edifice, maintain it, and protect its structural and historic integrity. We are transferring and handing over State House Marina to Lagos State Government in the spirit of togetherness. Nothing has changed. It's still within the same country. So nothing is lost. So that's just the internal, and that's what is, that, that's, that's, that, th these are the contents of the MOU. Governor Akiwi Ambode, who was represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Tunji Belo, commended President Muhammadu Buhari and Acting President Professor Yemi Oshibaju for approving the handover of the Presidential Lodge to the State Government, while assuring them that the edifice will be put to the best and most judicious use. They have handed it over, as we wish, and... We want to assure the Koshians, as well as Nigerians in general, that the place will be well preserved. The place will already well preserved, and we are going to do more. The presidential lodge built before independence in 1960 has housed several presidents and military heads of state before the relocation of Nigeria's capital to Abuja in Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. Time for some messages. The news continues shortly. Stay with us. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now, through our technology. LG OLED TV. Cadbury Born Vita now comes in an attractive new 500 gram refill pack. Simply open and reseal after use to retain the chocolatey and creamy taste. Cadbury Born Vita, prepare to win. Chavita, burst of refreshment. House of Cheese. Thank you for remaining with NTA Network News. Nigerian Communications Commission vows to sanction telecoms operators involved in coal masking and coal refilling. Chazala Mekie has details of these and the closing figures on the Nigerian stock market. A warm welcome to Business News. Survey from the National Bureau of Statistics says about 95% of Nigerians will accept a bribe when offered or pay a bribe when demanded. The statistics says about $4.6 billion was spent on bribing public officials with 92% of the amount paid in cash between 2015 and 2016. It looks bad because it's corrupt. But in this case, it's telling you that the very fabric of getting your civilization from one point to another has a problem. Because it says clearly bribery is an established part of administrative procedure in Nigeria. The link between bribery and economic development is a negative link. Every country that has a bribery problem is always underdeveloped. They are three times underdeveloped. Meanwhile, about 44,000 companies have so far been delisted from the database of the Corporate Affairs Commission. The Registrar General of the Corporate Affairs Commission, Bello Mahmoud, says the development was sequel to several breaches of the Companies and Other Matters Act, Karma. A company is supposed to file annual returns every year. And if you have a company, you don't file annual returns. If it gets so many years, CAC will presume that you this company is dead and they will delist it. Whether you are making profit or you are making loss, you have to file an act. It's a statutory requirement. About 1.5 million companies have so far been registered. And the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, has vowed to sanction telecoms operators involved in call masking and call refilling. The NCC says the commission has concluded its check and will impose a fine against operators that indulge in sharp practices. A quick check on how the equities market fared this Thursday.
that's the package. I'm Chia Zalamek here. The news continues. Don't go away. An 11-year-old exposes evil intentions of Boko Haram. Details of these and more with Naomi in our Maiduguri Network Center. Hello, Naomi. Welcome to Maiduguri. An 11-year-old girl taken to Boko Haram terrorist by her father for the purpose of suicide bombing has reported to security agents having refused to detonate the improvised explosive device trapped to her body by the terrorist. Memuna Garba tells us more. The girl escaped when disagreement ensued among them as who is to detonate her IED first during which she sneaked out of the arena and threw her IED vest upon hearing the sound of the other girl's explosions. She was subsequently apprehended by members of the civilian JTF. The girl confessed that her father personally handed her to Boko Haram terrorists where she was assigned to carry out the dastardly act. <laughs> It could be recalled that the military recently in a statement by the Director Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Sani Kuka Sheka Usman, has appealed to traditional, religious, and community leaders in the Northeast to help dissuade people from donating their daughters' awards to Boko Haram terrorists for suicide bombing missions. In Maiduguri, Maimuna Garba, NTA News. Borno state government has flagged off the distribution of food items provided by the Federal Government Emergency Food Intervention Initiative for the Northeast in southern Borno. Abubakar Muhammad Musa has the report. Flagging of the distribution, Borno State Deputy Governor Usman Momon Durkwa commended the federal government for considering Borno State with 15,000 metric tons out of the 30,000 metric tons of food items provided to the northeast zone. The deputy governor said the state government on its part has taken the responsibility of supporting the transportation and distribution of the food items and assured the people that everybody will benefit during the distribution exercise, which is based on household distribution arrangement. Chairman Borno State Emergency Management Agency, Sema Satomi Ahmed, said already they have registered all the households in the affected communities and have issued them with a card ticket as identification for the collection of the food items. In all the places visited, both the traditional rulers and the beneficiaries have expressed their appreciation to both the federal and state governments for the donation and distribution of the food items. The deputy governor and his entourage were also at the Emir of Bus Palace, al Hajime Umar Mustafa Aliu, for a courtesy call where the Emir expressed appreciation to the federal and state governments for their effort to cater for welfare of their citizens. In Meduguri, Abu Bakr Mohammed Musa, NT News. And that does it from Meduguri is back to Kudu in Abuja. Good evening. Thank you, Naomi. EFCC continues to recover loots from suspects. Beauty in Enugu brings us up to speed with details of these and more. Hello, Beauty. A fine evening to you. Welcome to Enugu. The Presidential Economic Diversification Initiative team is in Imo State to inspect alien industries. This is geared towards developing the Niger Delta region and creating employment, as we hear from Seleo Sayende. Nigeria, no doubt, is in the spotlight as an emerging market with the relentless effort by the federal government diversifying the economy, like this mission to the state, led by the Niger Delta Minister, Usani Usani. The economy is on the verge of smiling again. But to make that happen, all parties involved in the process were gathered here, Australian plans and potential bureaucratic bottlenecks. Governor of Imo State says the project needs commitment and diligence. It is only during this government that practical steps have been taken to diversify from oil. I want to commend President Mohamed Buhari and his team the intention of government at this moment is to make the Niger Delta region a region of litmus test to be able to spread the initiative all around Nigeria. Interactions and presentations by investors and development partners at the summit underscore the importance of understanding 
every detail relating to the monumental tax that lies ahead. It will Fellow signed the NTA News. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is in the South East Zone, has recovered over 500 million naira in the last eight months from suspects. The Zona head of the Commission, Johnson Babalola, said at these while briefing newsmen in Enugu, Amakao, we complete that report. The zonal head of the commission, Johnson Babalola, disclosed that about 503 petitions were received from Nigerians with 330 petitions approved for persecution. He added that 32 of these cases have been charged to court, out of which suspects in five cases have been convicted. Mr. Babalola also disclosed that the sum of over 422.5 million naira have been recovered from the PDP illegal campaign funding of 2015 elections. The PDP 2015 illegal campaign funding that the commission is looking to in the southeast region uh, is still being is still ongoing, and um, monies are still being recovered. We are there strictly to the principle of rule of law and will respect fundamental human rights of Nigerians. Other cases undergoing investigation at the anti-graft agency, he said, include the award and execution of contracts of federal roads in the southeast, which is in deplorable condition, and those of the independent power projects. These, he said, are in advanced stage of investigation in Enugu and Makao, NTA News. And that does it for us. It's back to you in Abuja. Thank you, Beauty. Foreign news and sports are next on our lineup. Please don't go away. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws. National, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. NAVDAC as an agency is indeed doing so much to protect the health of our nation. I urge everyone to support NAVDAC in reading the country of fake drugs and unwholesome products. Let us support NAVDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAVDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. Adebola Brookson Sunday is here with Global Tidbits. Thanks for joining me. I kick off this segment from Sierra Leone where reports say nearly half of the 400 people known to have died in a mudslide and flooding on the outskirts of the country's capital, Freetown, have already been buried. The government had said mass burial would be postponed on Thursday to allow relatives identify victims. But sources reveal the chief pathologist of Freetown saying that some interment had already taken place. About 600 people are still missing following the disaster. President Enes Baikoroma has declared seven days of mourning while pleading for urgent support. And from Saudi Arabia, report says its border with Qatar will be open to allow Muslim pilgrims attend the annual Hajj in Mecca beginning this month. The announcement came after the first high-level meeting between the neighbors since Saudi Arabia and three other states cut all links in June. They accuse Qatar of aiding terrorists, a charge the Emirates denies. The closure of the Saudi border has forced Qatar to import food by sea and air for its population of about 2.7 million. Prosecutors from Venezuela say at least 37 people have been killed in a prison riot in southern Venezuela. Witnesses report hearing gunshots for several hours in a development the state governor called a massacre. Prosecutors say 14 officials were also wounded in the violence. The prison was holding 105 inmates at the time of the riots. That's it from this end. The news continues. Kinema Wadige has the sport update. 
The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogen, has